everybody. So today I just wanted to do a quick video about the different stages that clay goes through when you're working with it. Um, so the first stage is just a block of clay. So this is before you make it into anything. Tears apart easily. You can sculpt it, shape it, throw it, do whatever. This is when it's the most malleable, um, really versatile form. This is where it all starts. You can do whatever you want with this block of clay. The next stage would be after you make whatever it is you're making um, and it's had time to set up, which is called leather hard. Um, so this is wet. This piece right here, this is leather hard. I'm currently in the process of doing some surface treatment on this piece. Um, so this is leather hard. You can scratch it, which I'm not going to do because I'm working on this piece, but you can scratch it and still make a mark. You can carve into it. You can trim the bottom of your piece. Um, so this is when you do a lot of altering or decorating is when the piece is leather hard. Um, let me show you an example. So I trim all my pieces when they're leather hard, which would be putting a foot on. I do that when it's leather hard. If you try and trim it when it's too wet, it's not really going to work out well. You're not going to have a really clean looking foot. It'll just messy. doesn't work. So after your piece has been wet and then leather hard, it starts its real drying process. Um, and it's going to become bone dry uh, or also referred to as greenware. So this is the clay's most fragile state. I have the most clay fatalities when it's bone dry because it's really brittle, really dry, really fragile. So these are the, both the same clay bodies. I work with Miller 65. This is what it looks like when it's wet. This is what it looks like when it's bone dry. So uh, most of the color has left it when the moisture left. Um, I'm going to show you exactly how fragile it is when it's bone dry. So you can just take it and snap it just like that. Just pull the handle right off. Totally, totally brittle, dry, bad news if you're going to be really rough with your pot because it'll probably break. I learned the hard way to clean up the cut on my yarn bowls because they get a spiral. So I try and clean up that cut that I make with an X-Acto knife when it's still leather hard because a lot of times if I try and do it when it's bone dry, the spiral snaps right out of the center and then it's useless. I can't do anything with it. So after your piece has had time to dry, all the moisture gets out of it. It goes in for its first firing, which would be the bisque firing. Um, it's fired to roughly around 1900 degrees and it comes out looking like this. So just white. Sounds pretty dull when you tap it. Um, this is the first firing to get it ready for its glaze run. So to go from greenware to bisque with no issue, you really need to let the clay have time to dry. You should never, ever, ever rush your clay, even though we all do it, right? Because who has time to wait? But the longer you can wait for the moisture to come out of it, the better, because you can do a shorter firing, which conserves on energy. You have less explosions and cracking. Um, I've been firing myself for about a year. I got a kiln about a year ago, and I have yet to have any explosions in the kiln because I always make sure that it's totally dry. Um, I can't let you touch this in a video, unfortunately, but if you touch a piece of greenware and it's not cool to the touch, it's dry. The moisture has come out of it. So. If you feel any parts of it that are cool, just wait, just wait. So after it's bisked, you glaze it, you put it in the kiln for its final run, the glaze run, and then it comes out nice and shiny and colorful, ready to use. So um, if you're making something that is going to come in contact with food or liquid, really needs to be glazed on all surfaces 
that the food or liquid will touch because the clay body is really porous even after it comes out of the bisque so a lot of bacteria and stuff can get into the clay making it not food safe um, this also will the bisque wear will hold water for a period of time but it will leak out since it is still a porous surface ready to absorb any glaze so you really need to go through the uh, glaze run for it to be fully vitrified and food safe um, and the glaze run goes to about uh, 2300 2400 degrees depending on what cone you're firing to so that's really the life cycle of a lump of clay thank you so much for watching please like this video and subscribe and if you have any comments, questions, please leave them in the comments. I love getting comments. Um, or if you have any suggestions for videos that you would like me to make in the future, I would love to hear them. Thanks.